Anthony Serna and today with Anthony we're going to talk about certain topics here and the first one will be why we should not eat fat what's wrong about fat oh the, the fat on fat well you really can't eat fat without getting sick I found that for myself and uh, fats are just <laughs> unnecessary so stick with fruits you're a lot better with that it's just mm -hmm. yeah. What about nature? Don't animal eat? Don't animals eat fat? Not, not that I mean. I'm sure maybe there's some animals that do, but not that I've seen uh, living in farms and communities. It's not really the preferred food source for a lot of the animals that resemble us. Um, birds, of course, will eat seeds, so that has the fats in it. Let's say some rats might chew on some avocados here and there, but in general, you won't. Find, I haven't found maggots growing around an avocado, um, or animals that generally eat sweet carbohydrates to uh, to go with avocados. And I know when I eat, when I did used to eat avocados, I would feel really sluggish and tired and, and bogged down. And if you were an animal in nature and it was required of you to use your energy to, to get more food or to run away from predators or some sort of threat, you don't want to be bogged down and sloshy, you know, with any kind of fat you've consumed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what about oil? Oh. We hear so many great things about olive oil and French cuisine and Italian cuisine. What about oil? What about oil? Um, well, I mean, if you take a glass and you fill it with water and oil, see that water and oil separates. Majority, from what I've understood of our bodies, is composed of, composed of uh, water. So when we put oil with the water, we're going to separate. We're going to cause a, a constipation, as you will, inside the vessel, some sort of blockage, and the blockage is caused by the oil that we consume. And we really, there's no need to consume oil at all. You know, you can function just well without any oil. There's a lot of wonderful authors that are great speakers and great writers that will talk about, you know, the fats that heal, the fats that kill. I found that to be complete nonsense. You never see an, a marathon runner or an endurance athlete or in general a performance athlete chug down a bottle of, of oil before they compete, you know, before you're gonna do something because it's gonna bog you down, it's gonna make you very sick. Um, so it's also going to cause a great burden for your organs, including your liver. So what do the marathon runners do? Um, generally, um, they either fast, you know, before the event. I mean, as I wrestled, I also didn't eat anything before my event. But uh, an endurance athlete also is going to consume maybe carbs. I know I used to chug down uh, syrups, uh, great gray bee maple syrup, uh, you know, sweetened items. Um, some have these little gel packs, which is nothing but sweet sugar. Mm -hmm. so, carbs. so sugar isn't bad for you? No, I, that's all I live on. I live on uh, sugar. You're kidding me. Wait a minute. We are told everywhere and our kids are told to avoid sugar. And when we see pies and uh, donuts and so on, we hear don't eat it because it's sugar. Can you comment on that? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the cakes, donuts, pies, ice cream, everything that you think, chocolate bars, it's, it's all wrapped up fat. And so the sugars, um, you know, your body becomes insulin resistant. But uh, just look at the idea of a chocolate bar. You know, think it's the sugar that's hurting you, but in reality, it's the, it's the process. The fact that you're eating all this cocoa butter, you know, it's, it is butter. It's disgusting. It's brown butter and some sugar. <laughs> and you're eating the brown bitter butter and with a lot of sugar, so you think it's really tasty. And it's actually causing a lot of obstruction in your body. That applies to cakes and pies, so the butter with the eggs, with the, the nasty stuff in there that's going to cause a, an obstruction in your body. So for me, I'd rather eat bananas and, and peaches and pears any day of the week versus any food, not just as a, as a treat or as a dessert, but as a fuel source, if I'm, if I'm looking at it as a fuel source. Mm -hmm. What else do you eat? Um, water, fruits, watery fruits, that's pretty much <laughs> all I really know. So you eat bananas, fruits. peaches and pears, and when I ask apples. what else, you say water? <laughs> no, <laughs> apples, oranges. I mean, okay. the, the fact is, it, it's when you talk about nutrition or foods, what we eat, for some reason, a lot of these great nutritionists and dietitians and great authors fail to address your, your environment, your air that you breathe in. That's actually nourishment. You know, you're going to drop dead a lot sooner with lack of air than you will with lack of food. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, based on that, I would say that the air is more valuable than the quality of the air is more valuable than the food. Why don't we come mm -hmm. talk about that? We talk about GMO foods all the time. No one talks about the GMO air, quote unquote. I'm not saying GMO, but polluted air, toxic air. That's going to cause more degeneration of your health than food because you shouldn't be eating that stuff anyway, the garbage. When you eat fruit, do you ever worry about fruit being organic or not organic? Um, Which one is your preference? 
My preference, depending on the economy, the economy of it, the availability of it, and also the integrity of the people that are telling me, like the USDA, United States Department of Agricultural Inspection, there, there are standards for organic allow for a lot of things that you may not be aware of. I mean, as an example, a lot of the water that's being used comes from feed lots and it's contaminated with feces from animals and other chemicals. You got you got acid rain, you got no control over that, you got the environment pollutions. So you really have a lot less control than you think, just if it's not sprayed, that's such as an added uh, discomfort. But as far as like anyone that's transitioning to from where they're at to a, a mostly fruit-based diet, if not entirely fruit-based diet, they shouldn't con concern themselves. No one should concern themselves that greatly with this this thing because it becomes a barrier, it becomes a challenge to go 100% fruit or Right, it's a lot of people say I cannot afford it so I'm not gonna do this and they end up eating crap. Yeah. You know, or they what? Or they want? They don't want to do GMO fruits and vegetables because they're so sprayed and got chemicals. Well, any kind of meat you're gonna eat is all chemically treated. All meats, all cheeses, all dairies, eggs. They have to treat them before you, for just storage, and then for consumption. And anything processed and packaged has been Wait, treated. All sorts of meat, even meat that's organic. Yeah, I mean, I mean, think about it. You cut yourself, your blood's gonna turn brown. You know, I mean, you can hardly ever see meat being sold as brown or gray or greenish looking and that's kind of the, the there's shades of color when things are uh, rotting and that's what flesh is so if you have a choice of eating you know meats and all these other things or fruit go with fruit people tell me well what if there's nothing else to eat well then don't eat anything that day you're fine you're not going to die from not eating one day you know um, you deserve the highest quality value and you're not going to get that from eating glue you know glue is pretty much made out of all the animal products all animal flesh what do you mean glue um, boil down the muscle of an animal, you know, if you eat steak or something, boil it down, it becomes collagen, it becomes like a mucus, pussy, sticky paste. The same applies to potatoes and rice, it becomes the same glue that a carpenter would use back in the day, or a bookkeeper, a bookbinder, excuse me, to bind books and to buy shelving, you know, to bind these things. Whereas if it's fruit, fruit's gonna boil down to molasses and syrup. You know, those things, they're, they're sticky, but they, they leave your body a lot faster. And that's kind of the goal. You want to avoid things that are going to stay in your body for per determined, you know, for a longer period of time. And a lot of these, these nutritionists and dietitians and great authors, they fail to address how long something should stay in your body before it becomes a nuisance.